Good morning, Facebook. We're back in the house of God. This is Pastor John Jeter at North River Bible Baptist. I do want to give a shout out to our young people today that came out and we finished up the book of Jonah. We had our vacation Bible school before the sermon, so I want to thank the Lord for them. We talked about Jonah, and I, I would like to share this to our Facebook. Jonah was prejudiced, and I hate to say this, but Jonah didn't want the Ninevites to get saved, and then when God saved them, he got an attitude, he got power. So we don't want to be like that. We want to give the gospel. Again, we, we had that question today, but the gospel is transparent. It goes all, it's only one race, but it goes all nationalities, all culture, all languages, and all people. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be one church of difference. There's going to be one church full of God's all people. Amen? Amen. We come now to our last message in the book of Jude. For those of you that may have not been followed, but we've been doing a series in the book of Jude. Jude is what I call the vestibule of Revelation. Before God poured out his vows and his wrath and his bowls of judgment, Jude is the vestibule. He's preparing the world for God's sending his destruction. I told you when he, again, he sent his destruction with Noah. We had a global flood, and next time it's going to be by fire. And so the book of Jude is getting us ready for, again, God's wrath to be poured out. Just for a little recap of what we did, we started out with be not troubled, let no man deceive you. And then after that, we went to you're saved. God saved them out of Egypt, then he destroyed those that did not believe. So you, it's only two sides. You're, you either save the lost. There's no in-between. People say, well, you know, I'm not serving the Lord. Well, if you're not serving the Lord, you're serving the devil. Because there's only two sides. Then we talked about uh, wolves and sheep clothing. We talked about apostasy. Cain was apostasy. We talked about Balaam. We talked about Korah. We talked about false prophets and false teachers. You don't need to be under false teachers. Then we talked about the contract between Enoch and Lamech. Enoch was the seventh from Adam on the godly side. Lamech was the seventh from Adam on the ungodly side. We talked about that. Then last week, we talked about pulling them out of the fire. Some people need help. You just have to pull them out. They're going to stay in sin for so long. So sometimes you have to grab them and snatch them or pluck them or pull them out the fire. Amen? Amen? Turn to the book of Jude. If you don't know where it is, go to the book of Revelation. I need everybody in the Bible and flip back to the book of Jude. Cut off your cell phones and stuff like that. We're in the word of God today. And thank the Lord for those that are here and came to hear the word of God. Jude. There's only one chapter, so we're going to look at verse 20 and 21. I'll read 20, you read 21, I get my text and I pray, and we're getting to the Word of God. Amen? amen. Okay. Did that say amen? amen? Jude, verse 20 says, But ye, this is the answer that Jude is given, Beloved, Christians, you that are saved, Building up yourselves, we're going to talk about today, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Well, these are the things that we need to do. Jude has given us an antidote for apostasy. The title of my message today will be, you need to build yourself up. When you're building, you're building on the foundation. There's two foundations. There's the cornerstone, the rock, Jesus Christ, or there's a sinking sand, the apostasy. Christian, build up on the solid rock we're going to talk about today. So would you bow your heads, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for another Lord's Day. A day that you have made, we will rejoice and be glad. Lord, thank you for the people coming out today, even the youth, Lord. The finishing up the book of Jonah. Thank you, Lord, for your inner later ways that we was able to have all four chapters of Jonah. I want to give a shout out to Jameson being there every time we had. So Lord, thank you for that. Pray for my grandkids and the others who could not be here for quarantine. All those that are still getting over Corona, pray that you help them. Lord, we don't want to forget our world is suffering from this disease called COVID-19, Corona, all over the world, Lord. We know that's your hand that you've given us a wake-up call. So Lord, I pray now for the First line responders, the nurses, the doctors, the farmers, the 
ambulance drivers, the police, or everybody, the labs that are working. I pray for those that are giving their lives to the coronavirus, those that have lost their lives. I pray for family members, Lord, that have buried their loved ones. I pray for those that have recovered, Lord. And Lord, I'm so grateful that the percentage of recovery is so high than the percentage that died. So I thank you for sparing those lives, Lord. I pray now, Lord, that those that have spared their life, Lord, they will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for our families, pray for our church home, pray for every church planted by your right hand that's open the word of God this morning. Pray for our children, our grandchildren. Lord, I've lifted up the school system, Lord. I've heard so many different stories about how we're going virtual, how we're going half a day, how we got to sterilize the school in the middle of the week, and how we got to keep everything clean with Lysol and, and hand tents. So, Lord, you know all about it. Even our churches, Lord, we have to sterilize this this morning, Lord. So I pray, Lord, that you would give us the wisdom and you would give us the know-how to do things to bring on and glory. Now, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Hide me behind the cross. Help me to rightly divide the word of truth. And we'll be careful to give you all the honor and the praise. For the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Two foundations. Jesus Christ or sinking sand. The cornerstone that we're talking about is none other than Jesus Christ. When a builder start building, he always, the masonry always put the cornerstone first. The cornerstone determines the fate of the entire structure. I don't know what you heard about it, but there have been several cases where buildings are failed because they didn't, they weren't built right. There have been several cases where the architect or the, or the contractor didn't, didn't put the right foundation. So we want to build on the right foundation. Amen? Amen. Matthew 21, 42 says, The stone which the builder rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. That is, the Lord's doing. You know they rejected Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about that. He was a stone that they should have rejected. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. This is the stone which was set at naught, which has become the head of the corner. They rejected him. But really, you can't reject him because he's still the head of the church. He's still the head of the home. He's still the head of the government. So I was asking me the other day about signs. They say, well, you know, people don't believe in the Bible. I told them the Bible is the best sign book, scientific book. You know, people don't believe in I said the Bible is the best history book. You know, people don't, I said the Bible is the black, the best math book. Because you can't prove nothing wrong. Everything that the Bible has written has come to pass. If you take uh, the calculation and do it in the Bible, you find out this is true. If you take all the, uh, what, the what ifs, or all the hypothetical in the Bible, you find out this is true. If you look at all the architectural findings and you find out that the history, is, the Bible is true. So the Bible is the best history book. Amen? Amen? The Bible is the best book. Matter of fact, let me just say it like this. During slavery, when they could not, they wouldn't let them to read. Do you know how they learn how to read? They learn how to read by reading the Bible. There have been so many. Matter of fact, I got saved. I, 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 I don't want to say this too, but I got saved on a a man who probably had a fourth grade, fourth grade education, but he knew the Bible inside and out. Amen. He could quote the Bible. He could, he, he could quote whole chapters. And I'm thinking, this man hadn't been there. didn't finish high school, didn't go to college, didn't do anything. So the Bible has been a great teacher. Matter of fact, right. if you didn't know it or not, they used the Bible back in the early days to teach kids the alphabet, to teach kids to read. The Bible was in Hebrew, Greek, and also in Aramaic, but it was still translated into English. Amen? Amen. Jude gives us the antidote for the error of apostasy. It's not just simply pulling back or hiding from the truth. But Jude said we need to build an offense. Look back at verse 20 in Jude. He said, but ye beloved, building up what? Yourselves. This is something you have to do. God has saved you. But God not going to make you come to church. God not going to make you do your prayer. God's not going to make you read the Bible. So these are things that you have to do. Matter of fact, the Bible in Ephesians 6 and 11 say, put on the whole armor of God. I did a series on that. Guess what, guys? You have to put on that armor. Amen. I got some military men, and they'll tell you that they can't go out in the field without their arm on, without their uniform on, without their gear on. I, I, I got a probation officer there. He'll tell you, you got to have your equipment on. You can't go to work and inspect the be. Uh, defenseless with, with nothing told yes I need my bulletproof jacket yes I need my weapon because 
This is my weapon, the Word of God. Amen? Now, these are some things that you need to build up on as we talk about today. Galatians 5, 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit, you need to have this in your life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, faith, and temperance. You need to have these. Again, you got to put those in your life. God saved you. But you got to exercise love. You got to demonstrate joy and peace. And then 2 Peter says like this, you add to your faith. God's our Savior, you add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temper, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. By the way, let me just say this. A lot of people argue all the time. They say, well, I don't believe like you believe. But well, let me tell you, one thing that we all all have is love. So you might not Amen. accept everything the way I teach it, but I need to love you. If you're a Christian and you on your way to heaven, I need to have the love of God. The greatest virtue is not hope and faith. The greatest virtue is what? Love. Amen. And then 1 Corinthians 3, 11 says, For other foundation can nobody lay than that which is laid is Jesus Christ. So if you're going to build your life on a foundation, you need to build it on Jesus Christ. If you're going to build your family, your church, on a foundation, you need to build it on Jesus Christ. If you're going to build your career on a foundation, now everybody don't have to be a preacher, but guess what? You can still be a Christian whatever profession you are. We need Christian nurses. We need Christian teachers. We need Christian probation officers. We need, matter of fact, one of the things that, that blew my mind, and y'all probably seen it, with uh, this protesting and, the, and, and these... Uh, Black Lives Matter, there were some Christian police out there that was praying. Did y'all see that? I said, isn't that a blessing? And the police said, look, I understand that y'all want to have a peaceful protest. But I'm here for one reason. I'm here to support your protest, and I'm here to pray for you. These were Christian police. I said, praise the Lord. We got Christian police. So we need to build our lives on a foundation. Psalms, I already mentioned to you, 118, 22, said the stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus was rejected by the religious leaders. Let me give you those religious leaders if you don't know about that. The Pharisees. The Pharisees were supposed to be the doctors of the law. They had God not, but they, they rejected Jesus. That was the Sadducees. The Sadducees was also a group, uh, uh, I guess you call it uh, aristocrats. They didn't believe in the angels. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They rejected Jesus. Then you had the Storks. Then you had the Eucharist. Then you had the Esteem. Then you had the Romans. Then you had the Rodians. All these groups rejected Jesus, but he was the cornerstone. They rejected Jesus, but they put him to death on the cross, and this is what they thought. After they rejected him, ridiculed him, beat him, mocked him, and condemned him to die, they thought that it was over. They said, well, you know, we got rid of him, but they didn't realize that they were working in God's plan. Amen? Because Jesus Rose. Amen? Amen? We're not talking about that today because this is not Easter Sunday, but I want you to know that Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's talk about Jude again. Jude is saying this is the antidote for apostasy. Building on Jesus Christ. The first one is that you need to build on discipleship, evangelism, soul witnessing, on Jesus Christ, the object of our faith. It is vital that we build on the right foundation. We need to build on the foundation. In Matthew 27, 24, and 27, it talks about two men. It talks about one man built his house on the rock. And the floods came. And the rain came. And the storm came. And the house stood because it was built on the rock. Amen? Amen. But the second man, it said, built his house on the sand. On the earth. Now, you know, I'm an engineer, so I can explain to you. If you're going to build your house down on the sand, you're going to be in trouble. Because when the tornado comes, or when the hurricane comes, it's going to flap. I didn't realize when I went to the Bahamas, I went to the Caribbean, they had all these stucco houses, and they had to come in and put in these uh, structures in there to hold the building together. So, the foolish man built his house on the sand. The Bible says the rain came. The flood came, the wind came, and the house fell. Because it 
that wasn't built on the rock. This ain't in my message, but since I got kids, I, I preach it today. You know the story of the three little pigs and the wolf? You know the story? The, the first pig built his house on the straw. Oh, y'all with me? Built his house on the straw. The second built his house with the wood. Y'all know the story. But the third pig built his house with the brick and the mortar. And the big bad wolf showed up. And he said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Y'all know the story. And the house on the straw, he huffed and he puffed. And the house failed. Had built on the straw. Don't build your house on the straw. Amen. And then the big bad wolf showed up with the second pig. He had his house on the wood. He said, I huff and I puff and I blow your house. Now wood is a little stronger than straw, but it couldn't stay. The wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. That's why the Bible says if you're going to build your life, don't build it on wood, heavy stuff. Build it on silver, gold, and precious stone. I'm, I'm going to just put myself in this story. I'm that third piece. I can get my house on, on the brick. <laughs> and the devil going to come. The enemy going to come. And so the big bad wolf come to my house. And I got a brick house. I'm going to look at the people. We all don't know. Look at the people. Who is that? The big bad wolf. And I can see him saying, well, let me in. No, you ain't coming in here. By the way, don't let the devil in your house. Amen. Let me in. If you don't, I'll huff. You know, puff. And I'll blow your house down. Because I had the word of God. Y'all don't want me to preach anymore. Since I got these kids here, y'all just bear with me. I can see him doing, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm just sitting there looking at the people and say, keep on blowing until you get out of breath. But you ain't going to blow it down. <laughs> you ain't going to blow it down. This house is built on Jesus Christ. This house is built on the rock. This house is built on water. You know what the wolf had to do? Tuck his tail and go home. <laughs> so I'm telling you now, build your house on the rock. It is vital. First Peter said, you are lively stone, are built up on a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God. We need to build our life on Jesus Christ. Jude is saying, build your life on discipleship. Build your life on evangelism. Build your life on soul winning. Win people to the Lord. I'm grateful today we got a young lady in because I asked her when she know the Lord, and she said, well, tell me about it. And she got on her knees and accepted the Lord as a Savior. Isn't that a blessing? So we're building our life on Jesus Christ. By the way, the only thing that I know that can help a person is the Lord. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care if you're out of work. I don't care if you got a disease. I don't care if you sell it. If you come to Jesus, I guarantee you, let me just say I'll bank on it, that he will make you a new creature. Yes. Amen? And we praise the Lord for that. And it, by the way, it's a testimony because she is in church. Amen. Amen? That's a testimony. I'm telling you what God can do. See, 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 a lot of times we don't know what God can do. But I can tell you what God can do, he's going to do permanent. Because God is a, a real God. He's a living God. He's a saving God. He's a caring God. He's a loving God. So all I got to do is tell people about Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Building is not haphazardly by coincidence. It's according to an intelligent blueprint. According to an a architect, Jesus Christ is the master builder. Amen? Amen. He's the architect. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Amen. who endured the, the, the cross, despite the chain, has sat down on the right hand of the Father. Let me tell you, we talk about Hercules, and we talk about Samson, and we talk about these superheroes, and we talk about all the, but let me tell you, Jesus is the hero. Amen. Jesus is the superhero. Amen. Penetrating the eyes and all this stuff you hear about Superman, let me tell you, let's yeah. just stay with Jesus. Because Jesus can do it all. Amen? Amen. Jesus set forth our integration, our mortar into the body. As stones make up a building, we ought to help in discipling people. By the way, when people get saved, I, I was just talking to Quinn, you know, we need to disciple them, and then they need to follow the Lord and believe in baptism, and we need to teach them the Bible. Amen? Amen. I'll just be honest with you. Uh, 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 new believers already doing the Bible study that I'm sitting out on Wednesday. Isn't that a blessing? So I tell you, when God works you, people open up their Bible, and she told me that she said, you know, I, I never understood the Bible. Now it's clear to me. I said, praise the Lord. Isn't God good? When the Bible, when God gets a hold to you, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, the Bible opens up itself to you. 
Amen, somebody. Amen. Point number one. We need to build discipleship, evangelism, soul witnessing in Jesus Christ. He's the object of our faith. Point number two. Praying in the Holy Ghost. We go back to that scripture and say, and praying in the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, clinging to the Lord in prayer. Praying in his strength and his wisdom. Not out. The Holy Spirit teaches us what to pray and how to pray. Praying in the Holy Spirit is a two-way street. When I'm praying, I'm talking to God. When I'm reading my Bible, God talking to me. So you got to do both. You cannot pray as one way. You have to read your Bible. And when you read your Bible, God is talking to you. And guess what? And when you pray, he's talking to you. And by the way, let me help you out. Because I love my Bible. The very thing that I'm going through, when I open up my Bible in devotion, Somehow, the Holy God speaks to me right through what I'm living in right now. The very thing that I'm struggling with, I open the Bible and I say, you know, I'm going to keep reading it. And I say, isn't that amazing? I just was thinking about that. And there it is in the Word of God. Isn't that a blessing? God's Word is truth. The Bible said, any of the issues of life. Let me tell you, whatever you're going through, read your Bible. God knows what you're doing and He will speak to you through the Word of God. Matter of fact, I'm a pastor. And I don't know what everybody's going through. But when I prepare the messages, God already knows who's going to be sending him. He knows what you need. And he's going to give me the word because I'm his vehicle to preach to you. And like I said, somebody might get this part from the message. Somebody might get this part from the message. But it don't matter. God's going to speak to you anyway. Amen. 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 Praying in his strength. I already said that. Praying to the Lord. 1 John 5, 14 said like this, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. James said like this, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Let me tell you, God's the answer. I don't know people say, I don't know why you're praying. I'm praying because God's the answer. I ain't got time to write down a whole log of prayers that I prayed for. Matter of fact, Jerry was talking about and it was just last Sunday. He said, y'all be praying for me. I got to go down to Atlanta and get my daughter car. Before we even got in here anymore, just so everything worked out. We got to work it out. Uh, we had to call from car, man, and everything worked out. Isn't God good? God still answers prayer. Now, 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 let me help you out. Most people don't understand it. God can answer somebody's prayer for you and you not even be saved. See, my mama prayed for me and I wasn't even saved. See, when I was in the world living like the devil, going to the club, doing everything, drinking the most, my mama was praying for me. And God was answering her prayer on my behalf. I'm a debt to my mama. I'm a debt to the people that pray for me. And my mama told me that when I got saved, she said, by the way, y'all know they call me Bubba. They call me Bubba. She said, Bubba, saints been praying for years for people. So, people don't realize the reason things happen is because somebody was praying. Oh, y'all, let me preach a little bit. I went to the doctor and I got, and the doctor didn't find nothing, and you don't know why. Somebody was praying for you. I got this job, I went in and I got favor with the boss. You don't know why. Somebody was praying for you. I was having a problem with my car. Uh, let, let me just preach a little bit. Sometime my wife said, I, I talk to you. I don't know what to do. I told y'all that one of the tenants had bleed off of, and I've been paying the, the bill for three years. Remember I told y'all that? And then I got a check in the mail. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a check in the mail. For three years of back pay. Three years. And then I told Jerry, I said, Jerry, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get a new windshield on the van. But the van had, somebody had, had bust the van. I, I took it over to, to, to the place and got the van, and then the guy told me, he said, you know, I'm going to give you my discount. Amen. He don't even know me. I mean, he, said, he said, I work here. But since you, since you come, I'm going to give you a discount. I said, in God be. Amen. So, so don't tell me. Don't tell me that God don't show up. God shows up. Amen? Amen. God will is always better for us. You know, sometimes we think it's God didn't answer the way we thought. But you know what? God planned it better. Amen? Amen? Verse 15 said that we know that he hears us. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire him. We need to have confidence when we ask God for a petition. 
And then Romans 8, 26 say it like this. For those of you that don't know how to pray, let me help you out. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Right. But the Spirit itself make it innocent for us with groanings yeah. and moaning, yeah. which cannot be uttered. Let me break that down for you. Sometimes you get burdened down, and all this stuff come down, and it look like the devil is weighing you down, and he got you in a crucible. You don't know how to pray. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit knows how to pray. So when you say, Lord, oh, I'm hurting, the Holy Spirit says, let me take those words, Lord, would you help my servant over that? They need a little help. The Holy Spirit takes those words. And you say, Lord, I don't understand why I'm having all these problems in my family. The Holy Spirit says, let me help you out. Let me, let me go on and minister to your family. Let me minister here. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes the groaning when you can't talk. And I, I don't know about you, but see, in the midnight hour when I'm in the bed and I'm wetting my pillows and I'm crying and ain't nobody at home with me but myself, I begin to talk to the Lord and the Holy Spirit begin to take my moaning and my groaning and turn them into Holy Word. And he be said, it's going to be all right. You're going to take care of you. I got you. You're in my hand. Don't worry about it. I'm going to work it out. And so the Holy Spirit be working it out. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I got a Holy Spirit that can pray when I don't know how to pray. Yes. Amen. Oh, I don't know how to pray. You said I'm a preacher. No, I don't know. Yes, Lord, thank you. Well, I got a Holy Spirit that works for me. So we need to thank the Lord. Point number one, we're going back over here. There's two foundations you need to build on. Jesus Christ, or the other one is sinking sand. You don't need to build on that one. First one, we need to build discipleship, evangelism, soul witnessing in Jesus Christ, the object of our faith. Second, we need to talk to him. We need to pray in the Holy Ghost and trust in him. And the last one, look back at Jude, verse 21. This is the last thing as I close. Keep, that means in the Greek, keep it. Keep going. Keep yourselves in the what? Love of God. You need to keep loving God. I don't care what's going on. You need to keep yourself in his love. And then it says, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Not only do you need to keep loving the Lord, you need to keep looking for his return. Yeah. Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen? Amen. So we need to look the the answer to apostasy is there's a second coming of Jesus Christ. The believer possess that great hope in the future of eternity. Titus 2.13 says, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. And by the way, if people say it, nowhere in the Bible does it say Jesus is God, it says right here, God and Savior Jesus Christ. If everybody say, and Jesus said it like this, I and my Father are one. For all the people that fussing about Jesus and God is not the same, I got news for you. Jesus said, if you seen me, Philip, you seen the Father. Have I been so long with you? So I'm tired of these people saying Jesus is not God. Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. I know what you're saying, Trinity in the Bible. Let me tell you, Trinity is taught in the Bible. The principles in the Bible. Let me tell you, the word rapture is not in the Bible, yes. but it's taught in the Bible. Right. The principle is in the Bible. Yes. Let me tell you, 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 you might have never heard this before. The word Bible is not in the Bible. That's right. B-I-B-L-E is not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But guess what? This is the Bible. Amen. And here's the word of God. Amen? Amen. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's almost like this. I, I just told you about it. I was at third pig looking out the big bad world. <laughs> we are in the prison of this world. And we're looking at the people. And through that people, I'm looking for Jesus to come. Are y'all listening to me? Why? Because Jesus has encouraging hope. The Bible says in John 14, when we preach this at funeral, but we ought to preach it all the time. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. You believe in God, believe you also in me. In my Father's house, a many mansions. I don't know about the folks telling you to Cuba because of drugs, but I'm looking for a mansion. Okay? And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will receive you. I will come again and receive you into myself. There where I am, there you may be also. I want y'all to hear me this morning. Jesus Christ is coming back. By the way, he's been preparing this place for us for over 2,000 years. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is coming back. For all the skeptics out there, for all the mockers out there, Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen? Amen. And then he gave us comforting hope. And that comforting hope goes something like this in 1 Thessalonians 4.13. For the Lord himself yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel yes, and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ.
shall rise from her. Then those that are alive, as me and you, shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Let me tell you, Jesus is coming back. And by the way, those loved ones that have already died, don't worry about them, because they're already in hell. The Bible says even when he come back, they're going to rise, the dead going to rise up, and we that are alive going to rise up. Amen? Amen? So not only do we have an encouraging hope, we have comforting hope. Not only do we have comforting hope, we have purifying hope. First John 3, 2 says, For we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, if all they ask this question all the time, will people recognize you in heaven? Yeah, they're going to recognize you in heaven. Well, would you think they're going to be dumber in heaven than they are now? Yeah, when I get to heaven, I got a grandmama there. When I get to heaven, I got a mama there. When I get to heaven, I'm going to be so happy. Now, I know what you're saying. You know, I'm going to be around the throne of God. I'm going to be praying God. But I'm going to be so glad to see my relative. I'm going to be so glad to see the saints of God. And by the way, the people that you led to the Lord that you didn't know got saved, you're going to see it. Oh, that's going to be some people that going to say, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for sharing the scripture with me. Matter of fact, I'm on Facebook now. And there may be some people right now on virtual that when I give a son's prayer, when I give the prayer, you might get on your knees and pray. And I might not never know you, never see you. But when we get to heaven, I'm going to get a chance to meet you. Amen. Amen. I'm a dead, let me tell you, I'm a dead of the Paul for writing the gospel. I'm a dead for, I'm not the God for writing the epistle. I'm a dead of, to, to all the apostles for all, I'm a dead of, to Moses for the book. I'm a dead of, to the people that led me to the Lord. I'm a dead of, to the, the Bible college that I went through. I'm a dead of, to my, my, my past pastor and the priest. Look, they was instrumental in bringing me where I'm at today. Matter of fact, uh, when we talked to a young lady, she was saying I was in crude. And I said, yeah, I used to be student venture. And me and Charlotte were talking about how we used to go to Sadam Bible Camp and we used to learn the word of God. Let me tell you, we're in debt to those people because those people helped us to be where we are today. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? Go back to Jude. I want you to get back to Jude. We're going to finish up with verse 24 and 25. Now that after, now after Jude told her we to do these three things, to build yourself up, praying in the spirit, keep the love of Christ and look for us. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, he says, verse 24. You there say amen. Read that with me together. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verse 25. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Let me tell you what Judas said. He said, God don't keep you. I can't keep myself. God don't keep you from falling. Let me tell you, when I got saved in 1986, God has kept me. He's kept me serving him. He kept me in the faith. By the way, I believe in eternal security. I believe that once saved, always saved. I don't know people say, oh, you can fall from, you can jump. Oh, no, you can't. Let me tell you, if that's the case, then I'm stronger than God. Because salvation don't depend on me. Salvation depends on God. God is the one that saved me. God reached all the way from heaven and saved my wretched soul. God wrote my name in the Lamb Book of Life. God is the one that saved me. Now, I ought to live right, and I ought to do right, and I ought to come to church, and I ought to pray, but God is going to keep me. Matter of fact, at that day with the marriage song, the Bible said God going to feed me. Amen? Amen? He's able to keep us from falling. And then it says to the only wise. I like the word only. There's only one wise God. And that's Jesus Christ. I don't know about all these many gods and multiple gods and all these different religions, all these different denominations. Let me tell you, there's only one God. It said, the only wise God, our Savior. Now, hear it again. God's Savior can't be for one person. There's only one person that calls himself a Savior. His name is Jesus. Man. I know what you're saying. I get on this all the time. What color is Jesus? I don't care what color is Jesus. Jesus' blood runs red. And it's not important. Matter of fact, you had the melatonin like Adam and Eve and Noah of all the different uh, uh, pigmentation of skin. So it doesn't matter whether you're black, brown, red, yellow, white. God is still over everybody. Matter of fact, we're one nation. We're one blood. we all been saved. If you let the blood of Jesus save you, then we wouldn't have all this bigotry. We wouldn't have all this prejudice. We wouldn't have all this violence. We need to get back to the book. We need to get back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, man, he's the only one. Only one, amen? It says, only God, our Savior. And look what it says. Be glory. You're going to give glory, give it to the Lord. And majesty. By the way, I may not look like much to you, but I'm a son of the king. 
<laughs> if he owned the cattle on a thousand hills, that means he owns me. And I'm his child. Matter of fact, the Bible says I'm a co heir. Oh, y'all want me to preach a little bit? Oh, you ain't no billionaire. You ain't no multimillionaire. Well, ho hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let me correct that. Who do you think I own all the money with? Who, who, who do you think? It's definitely not man. God owns the money. Who owns all the land in the world? I know what you said. There's so many families. They own most of the real estate. Let me help you out. No, they don't. God can take it back in a minute. Matter of fact, you can't take it with you. Amen? Amen. It says glory and majesty and dominion. Oh, I like that word dominion. He's over all. The Bible says he sits high and looks low. Let me tell you, he may be a high and lofty, but he's accessible. I can call him in the midnight hour. Amen. See, he's not one of those gods that, like Elijah told the prophets of Baal, don't you call on him, maybe on vacation. <laughs> or don't you call on your God, maybe he's taking a nap. You know the type of God you got, he ain't hearing you. But the Bible said, this ain't even my message. The Bible said, Elijah built that old altar. Yes, took those stones and put down the book. He said, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And then he built the 12 tribes. And then he poured water. Oh, y'all went to preach a little bit. He poured water on it. And, and then he put the sacrifice. He put it on the altar. And then he told him, just in case, pour some more water. And then they pour some more water. And then he said, just in case, pour some more water. And they poured, let me hear you One time for the Father. One time for the Holy Ghost. One time for the Son. And then he said, he got out on the knee. No, that's important. He said, Lord God. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes. Not the people know God, the true God, you got one. And before he can say, Lord, send the fire, the fire came down. Matter of fact, if you never seen a bolt of light, if you never seen the thunder, let me tell you, God sent a bolt of light straight from heaven, and it consumed their sacrifice, and it burned up the bricks, and it licked up the water. Y'all know what he Elijah said that. What were y'all saying? This is the God. The name of one God. Let me tell you, you need to trust in the God of heaven. Amen? Dominion and power. The word power, do the most. Both now, are y'all with me preaching? He, he, he's in control now. He was in control in the, in the beginning. Jesus is the same yesterday, but it is today and forever. He was back when the animal was there. He was back when Moses was there. He was back when Ezekiel was there. He was back with Malachi. He was back there. He walked the earth with the disciple. He was there in the upper room. Oh, y'all want me to preach When Paul came on the scene. And then in 2020, right here in North River Bible Baptist, I want you to know he's here. Amen. The Spirit of God is here. Amen. The Bible says, come down, Holy Spirit. Amen. Fill this house. Lord, I know your word, every time the word is preached, God is sending his Holy Spirit. And by the way, if you didn't know it or not, let me just preach a little bit. Those seats that look like they're empty, he got angels. And the angels are sitting there. And they won't let the word of God fall on the ground. God's word is pure. It's been tried seven times. God's word is true. Let me tell you, we got a God that sits high and looks low like the old said. He's a mind regulator like the old said. He's a bridge over the top of water like the old said. He's a meal in the middle of the wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's my bread. He's my water. He's everything I need. Let me tell you, you're grateful. You say, stop getting off in the apostles. Stay with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he, he ended up like this. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hand of a living God. Amen. If you're not saved today, you don't have to stay that way. The Bible says it's a fearful thing. You don't want God's wrath poured out on you. So as I close, Judah said, you got two foundations. You got Jesus and you got the apostasy. Build your life on the rock. Amen. If you don't know the rock, let me give you a sinner's prayer I've been giving every week. And this is a prayer that you can pray. Now it's got to come from your heart. I'm just giving you the words you can repeat after me. And these words, if your heart is right, God will save you. And it goes something like this. Dear Jesus, Lord, I understand what the preacher was preaching. Even in the book of Jude, I uh, preached about that we need to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ, not the apostasy, not the sick and sin. Lord, I realize my life is not right. I realize that I made a lot of mistakes. I realize that I sinned. 
Lord, I'm asking you right now to forgive me of my sins. Lord, I'm asking you right now to come into my heart and save me. Lord, I believe that Jesus came. I believe that he's God. I believe that he died on a rugged cross. I believe that he was buried. I believe that he rose on the third day. There's no other person that claimed that he rose on the grave. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, to stay. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I want to tell you about the authority of the word of God. You are a child of the king. But I want to share this with you. You need to get into the Bible believing church. You get, you get to church where the man of God preaches the word of God. Where they got Sunday school. And they got Wednesday night Bible study. And they got new converts playing. And they got a small group. But you need to get, and, and people need to start teaching you the things that you need to do to bring on and go to it. So until next week, Facebook, next week, as the Lord is, is leading me, I'm going to start teaching on the tabernacle. And the reason I'm teaching on the tabernacle and the temple is because there's a third temple that's coming. That during the tribulation, the Antichrist is going to, they're going to have a temple. They're going to, the Jews are going to go back into uh, sacrificial worship. So God has put on my heart, I need to start teaching prophecy on preparing. We won't be in the church we go, but there will be a temple that will be resurrected in the last day. So I'll be teaching from the book of Exodus, the book of Ex uh, uh, Ezekiel, and the book of Revelation about the new temple, the third temple. That we Amen. So until next week, I want you to continue to, like the Bible says, look up. You're redemptive draw down. Keep your faith and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.